man's best friend, his dog, honoring his dog at Dog Mountain at Dog Chapel. What on earth am I talking about? It's on the east side of St. Johnsbury, Vermont, and the sign says Dog Chapel? Yes, it's Stephen Hoenig's Memorial Chapel for Pets. It includes all kinds of great stuff here on Dog Mountain. It's like a dog park on steroids, plus much more. Travel across America with me. I don't know what we're getting into, but we're going to get into it. Let's park. Drive slowly because there are dogs at play. Dog Mountain. There's trails. There's a pond. There's the chapel. What is this? A trail report? Recent porcupine encounters? Oh no, we don't want that. There are rules, so be sure to read the rules if you have brought your dog. This is the home of Stephen Hunick Gallery and the Dog Chapel. It's voted the best Vermont attraction by USA Today. Let's see what it's all about. There is a suggested donation and there is an annual pass and that makes Makes sense for people that will be returning with their pup. You'll be greeted by the friendly staff in the gallery. The Stephen Hunick Gallery features a collection of the Vermont folk artist original woodcuts, prints, carvings, furniture, gifts, and New York Times best-selling series of children's books. Visitors experience the enchanting work of Stephen Hunick and can take home a Dog Mountain memento. Hours for the Stephen Hunick Gallery do vary, and they are seasonal, so be sure to call and check their website before going. But the Dog Chapel and the Dog Mountain Grounds, they're open daily from dawn till dusk. We'll be going to the chapel, the trails, and perusing the gallery. Man's best friend. Where are you traveling from? Mark the map. People travel from all over the world to come to Dog Mountain. This is a nonprofit set on 150 acres of pristine mountaintop covered in hiking trails, meadows, and dog ponds. Several times a year, Dog Mountain hosts unforgettable dog parties for hundreds of people and their dogs. Dogs aren't just welcome on Dog Mountain, they're cherished. Yes, this is a special place for your dog. I don't even know if they allow cats. But why would a cat want to go to Dog Mountain? Let me tell you a little bit about Stephen Hunick. He and his wife Gwendolyn bought the property in 1995. They turned the barn into studio space. After Stephen's unique visionary experience, the Dog Chapel soon followed. The Dog Chapel opened its doors Memorial Day weekend of 2000. Year after year, the Dog Chapel and the Stephen Hunick Gallery get more and more visitors from all over the world. The grounds on Dog Mountain are always open to people and their dogs. There's no leash law on Dog Mountain, so dogs are free to run, play, swim, and best of all, meet other dogs. It's great to hear from tourists and local residents alike how much Dog Mountain means to them and their dogs. They have all kinds of novelty items for you and your dog. Life is a ball, Vermont. Love is give and take. So many clever sayings on these things. Dogs make people human. It is so much fun to read all the signs in the gallery and the prints are all available for purchase. It's just an incredible place to walk through. And the woodcuts and some of the furniture. It's um, a bit interesting to say the least. Clever and unique and functional. My dog's brain. Oh, look what's on the dog's mind. Food, cats, riding in the car, walks, tug of war, socks, bones, more food, a ball, getting petted. What is on your dog's mind? Bad dog. Bad, bad, bad dog. As I mentioned, some of the furniture is rather unique and not all designed for dogs. We see some things that have fish. A fish lamp, a fish chest of drawers, a fish mirror. Oh, look. A cat with wings. It's all just so much fun. And look at the rail on the stairwell. It's a dachshund. We'll find the dachshund around the gallery in several other places. They really are accentuating their length. <laughs> I just couldn't help but cracking up at some of the things we found in there. Dogs have a soul. It may be longing to your shoe, though. Stephen Hunick grew up in New England, and he was fascinated by antiques. Stephen left his Massachusetts home at 17 with just 32 cents in his pocket. He hitchhiked to San Francisco. Stephen went back to attend Mass College of Art, where he met his wife, Gwen. Together, they moved to rural Vermont. Snowed in one day in 1984, Stephen was inspired to carve an angel from a block of wood. It was in the back of his pickup truck when a Madison Avenue dealer saw the angel and offered to buy it. The art dealer called Stephen repeatedly, asking for more. He had no more. 
That was his first and only carving, but that didn't stop him. According to Gwen, Stephen carved like crazy for six weeks. Basically, he learned by doing. This was the start of a new career. Stephen's philosophy is, do what makes you happy. I love my dogs, so I portray them in my art. Stephen has also written three books inspired by his lab, Sally, the classic My Dog's Brain, and a series of children's books, including the New York Times bestseller, Sally Goes to the Beach, and Sally Goes to the Mountains are illustrated with Stephen's colorful woodcut prints. He built the dog chapel for a place where people can go and celebrate the spiritual bond they have with their dogs. It is the largest artwork of my life and my most personal. Stephen realized his dream. The dog chapel is now completed. It is located on Dog Mountain. 200 acres of rolling pasture. Well, some things say 150, but we won't mince words here. And woods near Hoonick's St. Johnsbury home. A lab with wings tops the wide steeple. Inside, dog carvings and stained glass windows surround you. In front of the chapel is a dog sign, and it reads, All creeds, all breeds, no dogmas allowed. Stephen and Gwen opened their first Stephen Hoonick Gallery in Woodstock, Vermont in 1993, where both people and dogs are always welcome. In addition to exhibiting his own galleries, his work is exhibited in museums and prestigious private collections worldwide. No pun intended here, but Stephen has carved out a niche in the art world as a sculptor with a playful twist. People love what I do. It's fun, it's genuine, and it's true. The chapel. This place is so amazing. Look at all the pictures. Do you see a dog that might look like one of the dogs you had? I saw a photograph of a poodle that looked just like the one that I had when I was a little girl. This is simply amazing. There are pews with dogs on the end. There's so much more that I want to tell you about Dog Mountain and Stephen Hunick. You'll have to wait. There are rules for the dog chapel and posting memorial tributes to man's best friend honoring his dog. In addition to the walls, there are also photo albums that can be used. And there are rules for Dog Mountain Grounds. And let's go out on the grounds now. There are three main trails and several highlight points, including Angel Dog Overlook, where it was recommended that we go. Some of the trails were flooded because there's been so much rain up here in New Hampshire and Vermont. We passed by the Dog Agility Course and made it to Angel Dog Overlook, where we met some people letting their dogs just frolic around on this great cloudy day in the Northeast Kingdom of Vermont. Dogs aren't just welcome on Dog Mountain, they're cherished. As we walked around and it got a little sloppy on us, we found these dogs having such a great time in the pond. And of course, the beautiful views from the top of Dog Mountain across the Northeast Kingdom are matchless. Have you subscribed yet? If not, please do. And if you have, thank you. There is so much to uncover and talk about at the Dog Mountain Park, the Dog Chapel, the Trails, and Stephen Hoonick. And I want to tell you more about sort of the tragedy of this man's life and death. As we return, I want to tell you a little bit more about the chapel. It is a replica of a classic white New England country church from the 1820s. It took three years to complete. It features carved wooden dogs lining the pews and dog-themed stained glass windows in its 30 by 22 foot main room. In addition to the standard human-sized doors, the chapel has a dog door. Atop the chapel steeple is the golden angel dog sculpture, a seven by four foot winged Labrador Retriever taking flight. 
It acts as a fully functional weather vane. Angel Dog fell from the steeple in 2010, but was restored in 2020. You will find weather vanes throughout all of New England. As I've shown you, the walls of the chapel are covered with notes of remembrance and pictures of visitors, deceased pets. This isn't a cemetery. It's a memorial honoring man's best friend. This is a living piece of communal art and history. We started our visit in the gallery and gift shop. Then we went to the chapel and then walked out on several of the trails. It was a little muddy, as I mentioned earlier, but I thought this was a great place. We popped back around the chapel and back into the gallery to look at more of Stephen Hunick's designs. Stephen Hunick had created the dog chapel as a place to remember lost companion animals. He took his own life on January 8, 2010 at the age of 61 in Littleton, New Hampshire. Find a grave reports he was cremated and his ashes were scattered. I'm wondering if they were scattered on Dog Mountain. Who knows? He operated Dog Mountain at the time of his death and was apparently having a difficult time with the economy and depression. I don't think that he would want us to leave this video on that kind of note. He designed Dog Mountain as a great place for man to honor his best friend. And that's what we should do. We had a great day out on Dog Mountain at Dog Chapel and truly enjoyed his very unique artwork that all started when the gentleman from Manhattan purchased his first carving for $1,000. Honoring man's best friend at Vermont's Dog Mountain Chapel. Leave a comment below if you've been to Dog Mountain or if now you have a desire to go to Dog Mountain and leave a memorial, a comment, a photograph, of your best friend honoring your dog. As we are walking the trails, I noticed this and a thought came to my mind. It says pet waste station. And there's this trash can here with this big black trash bag in there. Do you know what that trash can's full of? Yuck! But at least we didn't step in any. Well, actually, there was one um, incident that we had to walk around on one of the trails. Somebody did not pick up after their pet, but we certainly appreciate that 99.9% .9 of the people do. Always pick up after your pet. And you all can guess why it's super important for me that everyone pick up after their pet because flip-flops on the ground and classic road trip. <laughs>